Hello again, day 29 I believe of my 100 days vlog challenge and in my last vlog I mentioned that I used to be a prison officer and I only lasted for two years, two years mainly because I was terrible at it. <laughs> I didn't get sacked, I just left. I realised that uh, prison officer work was not for me, so uh, I made the decision to uh, get out while I could, really. But I want to tell you a little bit about my, my story as a prison officer. And a few people asked me about that over the last 12 hours or so, so I thought I might as well just do a whole vlog about being a prison officer. So let's start right now. Here's day 29. Okay, I might as well start with the reason why I decided to be a prison officer. Looking back now, well, it's over 10 years ago now, so looking back, I can't even remember why the main reason was, but one of the reasons, well, there's a few reasons. Uh, for, I think the first reason was I needed a job. I just tried to be a self-employed website designer. It didn't quite work out as planned. I spoke to a few friends, you know, about uh, trying to find a new job, and one of my friends was already a prison officer, and he basically said, look, if I can do it, then you can do it. You know, we're both very similar characters, both similar backgrounds, and and he said, well look, why don't you try you know, being a prison officer? And at the time, though, the prison service were actually recruiting. So I filled in the application form, sent it off. Not really thinking about what I was getting myself into, really, but I got a letter to say I was invited to do the uh, pre-tests, as they were. So I went along to the HMP Rochester to do the tests. And to be honest, the written tests were very, very, very easy. Um, they, I think they were designed just to make sure there's nobody getting through who can't read or write. You know, it was basically a very, very simple English test, very, very simple maths test. But after that, there were a series of scenario tests to do as well. Now, I can't go to, into too much detail about what they were, but there was obviously three rooms with three actors inside, and you went into each room individually, and in one room you had Mr. Angry, another room you had Mr. Quiet, and in another room you had a guy with some serious mental issues. And that's what you had to um, confront as part of the scenario test. So you go into each room individually and you basically act out a scene. They, they weren't scenes mocked up to be a prison. They were everyday situations that you may encounter, but that it's the same sort of situations that you may encounter in the prison environment. I thought I did quite well on the tests. Obviously the maths and English tests were quite easy, but the scenario tests, I thought I failed one of them because one of the actors actually left the room. I don't know why. We got halfway through the conversation and I must have said a few things that were his prompt to leave the room. So I thought I'd failed, to be honest. So when I left, when I went home, I sort of told the boy I thought I must have failed because I actually made the actor leave the room. But a couple of weeks later, I get a letter to say, congratulations, you've passed. I have been invited to start training to be a prison officer. I couldn't actually believe it, to be honest. I was, you know, happy about it, but I wasn't really fussed if I did or didn't, but as I got that far, I might as well carry on. Then we go into eight weeks of training, and the training was absolutely amazing. Uh, we had some fantastic instructors, some fantastic tutors, covering a huge amount of issues that we would face inside the prison environment. There was a lot of role playing, a lot of role playing involved, a lot of um, mock up tests. There was a lot of emphasis on mental health, how to talk to offenders individually. Not all offenders are the same. You, know, you have to acknowledge the fact that some offenders will talk to you in a way that you're not used to. Talking about the training is really, really hard because there's so much involved. And obviously I can talk about the whole week we had in the self-defense and restraint and control training, which you know, a whole week of basically beating each other up. <laughs> Um, getting each other into certain locks. That was a lot of fun, very challenging. Through the whole training session, I think I grew up quite a lot in a very, very short amount of time. I think the training also grew me as a character, made me a stronger character. There was a lot of things I learned about myself during those short eight weeks. And in, in between the eight weeks, there was also a week's training at the actual prison you were allocated to. So I was gonna be allocated to Maystone Prison. After week four at training, I spent a week at Maystone. That's when I realized, oh my God, <laughs> actually, I'm actually gonna be a prison officer. All the time at training, it didn't really dawn on me too much. I, was, I think I was too busy enjoying it and learning. It was the first time that I ever set foot inside a prison, so it was a bit of a shock to the system, to be honest. You know, the first time you walk on a wing and actually see the places you, you'll be working and seeing the people you'll be working with, it was very daunting, a bit of a shock, really. I think, looking back, it, it should have been then that I left. <laughs> it should have been like, yeah, I should have left then. Looking around those surroundings, and it was a very eye-opening experience. The first time you go into a prison and think, mm, I don't think I've done the right thing here. I don't want to do this job. <laughs> I think I knew then that I don't think I was going to last 25 years, but I had to get a job. After the eight weeks training, uh, obviously I was uh, allocated to HMP Maidstone, which, as prisons go, is a very old prison. It's situated in the middle of the town of Maystone. Now the reason it's in the middle of the town is because the whole city is built around the prison. The prison is that old, most of the 
town is actually being built around it. These days when prisons are built, they're built in the middle of nowhere, so they're not really affecting anybody's life. But Maystone Prison is slap bang in the middle of Maystone. It's a very, it's a, I think it's Victorian. As soon as you go in, you realise all the buildings are old. That's a very, very old prison. When I first arrived in the prison, you also get told what wing you're going to be working on. If I remember rightly, there were four wings at Maystone Prison. The, the wing I was working on contained mostly sex offenders. What they normally would do in a prison is put all the sex offenders in one wing together because they are at most risk of being beaten up. And of course with sex offenders, most of them are paedophiles. So I found myself working on a wing uh, with approximately 120 paedophiles. Yeah, so it wasn't great. It was, uh, it was a bit of a shock to me. I presumed I'd be working in a prison with you know, the sort of prisoners you see on the TV, you know? Which meant they weren't stupid, all right? This may sound a bit weird, but with paedophiles, they're very, very clever. You can have teachers, lawyers, professional people. It's quite difficult to remember it, to be honest. It sort of <laughs> brings a lot of stuff back. Oh, fly. Um, yeah, and the first thing what really shocked me at first was the fact that all the offenders were really nice to you, especially in the wing I was in, all right? And that's not because they like you, because they're trying to condition you. They're trying to make sure that you're gonna be on their side, they're gonna be your friend, they're gonna, they're gonna think that you're gonna look after them if they'd be nice to you. It's all it's all a game, really. I mean, I, the first time I sat in the wing, it was very weird being called Gov all the time. Hello, Gov. All right, Gov. Very strange. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect, really. I didn't know what they were gonna call me, but being called Gov, I don't know, for like 12 hours a day was a bit strange at first. And the other thing I was more worried about was trying to remember everyone's name. Yeah, it's a very strange thing to think about, but I was, I was conscious of the fact that there's so many people there. So many people want your attention. A lot of people have you know, certain times of needs. Trying to remember everyone's name was one of the first things I was worried about. I don't know why I was so worried about making sure I remember everyone's name. Now, as I said at the beginning, it took me, after about two or three weeks, <laughs> I realised this ain't gonna work, I can't do this. In hindsight, no one's gonna learn how to be a prison officer in three weeks. I lost count how many times the experienced prison officer says that, you know, you do your eight weeks of training, but your real training starts as soon as you start working on the, on the wings. That's where you learn your prison craft, that's how you learn to talk to prisoners. You do eight weeks of training, great, but you don't really learn anything until you actually start working on the prison wing. Probably gave myself a hard time really in the first couple of months thinking I'm, I'm not good enough, I'm not going to be able to do this. I, th I think every prison officer probably says the same thing to themselves after the first few months. You, know, you don't walk on a wing and become an expert straight away. It's something you learn over years. I mean, even some of the more experienced prison officers that I worked with say so they're learning all the time, you know. Something new happens every, well, not every day, but there's something they didn't know comes up. There's always rules and regulations changing. You don't ever think you've nailed being a prison officer, I don't think. And I was told that a few times already, it's not, it's not just something new. I think after the first year, I was still very unsure about what I was doing from a day to day basis. I think I winged it for the first year, God knows how I survived. I seem to be going to work every day thinking, I still don't know what I'm doing, I still can't answer questions properly, still don't know exactly what I'm doing from day to day, you know, so it was tough to get through that first year. One of the stories that will always remain with me is the first time I actually had to use the control and restraint techniques that I learned through the training. The first time that I actually had a proper, I won't call it a fight, it's not a fight, but the first time I had to get hands on on a prisoner. And it's something that you've not trained for. You, you, you do the training, you envision what it's gonna be like when you first have to do the whole hands-on um, business. But the first time I had to do it, it was with a naked man, all right? You know, you do your training, you do your trainings all kitted up, you do the training with other guys with clothes on, with protective gear on. The first time I had to use it in real life, it was with a naked man who basically covered himself in butter. And the reason they did that is because when you try and get them into certain locks, your hands are just sliding everywhere. So when it's with a naked man, it's, you know, ten times worse and it's something I wasn't expecting. You're just thrown in a situation at a deep end thinking, by the way, he's naked. Ah. And to be honest, it was a fat naked man. Fat, hairy naked man. There you go, fat, hairy naked man covered in butter. So yeah, so that was my first experience of trying to wrestle with uh, a naked man. There was obviously three of us, and you know, there wasn't just like me on my own, there was three other, or two other prison officers, and it was all, <laughs> the strangest thing was, it was everyone was just laughing. You know, it's a serious situation, but trying to get hold of a naked man covered in butter, we could not help but laugh. Uh, and eventually the whole situation died down and we had a debrief and my adrenaline was rushing so much I didn't realise I had a cut in my head, bruise at the back of my head, 
a little bit, sorry, a lump at the back of my head, bruising my front of her face, um, where I've just, I've, I've hit, I've hit but at the ground a few times. Um, yeah, so once my adrenaline had died down a bit, I sort of had a bit of a headache, but that's one of the memories I'll always have, probably for the rest of my life. Another memory that will always be stuck with me was uh, one morning when I was unlocking all the doors. Um, I unlocked this one door and this guy came flying out of his door and his head was just covered in blood. I didn't have a clue what happened. First thing that went from my head was someone's broke into a cell during the night. No, that can't happen. But what this guy had done in the morning is tried to shave his head with a blunt razor and he's cut his head to shreds. So I think that's another image that always lives with me every time I think about my time there. And then about half an hour later I saw him again and he's, he's just got his head covered in tiny bits of tissue. Like when you do, when you cut yourself shaving, you put a little bit of tissue on. He had it all over his head. He looked like Pinhead out of the Hellraiser movies. But that's another memory that always remained with me. It'd be the naked man and the bloody headed man. That would be my two major memories of working at the prison service. Another thing I remember, again, this, this will remain with me for a while. It was just finished the visiting time, so all the visitors are left, and, and I was left with about 20 prisoners and that's three officers. And for some reason, uh, the, the prison was on lockdown, which meant no one could move. So wherever you were, you had to stay where you were until the all here. So maybe there was a fight happening somewhere. So until that's been sorted out, no one was to move around the prison. So I was stuck in the visitors' lounge with say 20 offenders and, and two other officers and we knew this was going to be a pain because all they wanted to do was get back to the cell so they can have their dinner or tea or whatever. So it was getting a bit, a little, not rowdy but it was, you know, it was very, very, it was very edgy. But one of the prison officers, he was able to hold a conversation with these 20 guys and have them completely quiet listening to everything he was saying. I can't remember the exact conversation but it's something along the lines of why um, the prison runs the way it does and because of his communication skills because of the way his body language was and because of the way he could portray himself in front of an audience probably that was the best way to put it this half an hour that we had this could have been you know very very edgy very very tense it was such a relaxed atmosphere because he was able to talk as though he was talking to everyone individually. And it's probably the best demonstration of prison officer work that I've ever seen, like that's, that, that I ever saw. Yeah, I saw a lot of great prison officer work, but that half an hour watching one guy talking to 20 very, very different people at the same time would always remain with me. And that, that's, that's what prison officer work to me really, really meant, was being able to communicate with a vast array of diverse people and make them feel that they were being treated the same as everybody else. Now, some people say, was there anything you actually enjoyed working in the prison service? The banter between you and the prison officers. You didn't really banter too much with the offenders because you didn't want to be seen as a joker or someone who they can get along with. But as a prison officer to prison officer, yeah, the banter was you know, really funny. I mean, the, the stories you used to share, little things that make you laugh. That, that's, that's probably the only thing that I can look back at and go, yeah, that was that was funny. <laughs> it's like gallow humour, I think I call it gallow humour. So how can I sum up my time as working as a prison officer at HMP Maystone? I think it's a learning curve for me. It taught me a lot about life. I certainly saw a different type of life. A type of life I didn't think I'd ever see. Also realised what I can and can't do as a person. I realised what type of character I am. Also realised my limitations. And for that reason, I don't actually regret doing it. Difficult to explain, really. I regret actually applying for it without really investigating what it involves. I regret that's the fact that I just jumped in and went, yeah, I'll be a prison officer and just, you know, applied. But I don't regret doing it. I, th you know, I think, I, you know, as I said earlier, I did learn a lot about myself in those two years. So what would I tell anybody who's thinking about being a prison officer? I would definitely tell them to try and get as much background as possible about the whole job. Yes, there's lots of things online, but if you're able to speak to prison officers themselves, and actually work out whether you're right for the job. That'd be my advice to anyone think about doing it. I think the main attribute as a prison officer, what you need really is, you know, it's not about the macho-ness, it's not about how big you are at all. It's all about how good you are at listening and solving problems quickly. Quick thinking, thinking on your feet. It's not about, you know, how big muscles you have and how good you are at beating people up. It's nothing like that at all. Now, I can't stress that enough, really. I can't stress the fact that it's not a job for macho men. I think it, you may, it may help you with your confidence at first, but you'll soon realise it's not about brawn and that sort of thing it's all about your mental capacity to be able to sort things out very quickly you know if you're confronted with angry men first thing in the morning you know most of the time you're on your own you know you're not going to be able to stand there and take on the world it's about communication you know de-escalation there's so many other things to think about before 
the use of force is used, you know. Uh, sometimes you, you'll speak to someone for you know, for an hour before you think actually this is not going to get resolved. So you know, other means are used. Now, when people ask me what's the worst thing about being a prison officer, the worst feeling for me was the fact that I just wanted to go home. Always looking at the clock: is it time to go home? Is it time to go home? And now, for me, there was no job satisfaction whatsoever. I never ever went home thinking, "Oh, good, I did a really good thing today." Yes, I might say I've done a good job today, but. I never, I never actually look back and go, I am proud of what I did today. Again, it's just a job. It was just a job that I thought I just had to do to earn a living. Just getting to work, getting the day done and going home. They were long days. They were 12 hour shifts, eight hour shifts. You also hear a lot of people saying how prisons are you know, treated like holiday camps. To an extent, yes. All right? I'll agree with that to an extent. But when you think you have a wing of say 150 Prisoners. On a good day, you'll have six prison officers to those 150 offenders. You have to make sure that these 150 offenders are, well, I won't say word happy, but content. All right? So when you hear prisoners have got TVs, PlayStation, Xbox, or whatever they have in their cells, you have to look at it and say, that's to help the prison officers maintain order inside. If you can imagine 150 offenders with nothing to do, okay, all day, yes, you might think, well, well they deserve it, and yeah, but, if you have all them, all them offenders doing nothing all day, the only thing they have really to do is cause trouble. And that will cost, without wanting to blame cost to everything, but the amount of damage that will cause. In the evening time, if you walk around a wing when all the doors are open, I would say 80% of the offenders are remaining behind their door, either watching TV or playing on a games console. The others will be playing uh, table tennis or snooker. Without that, they'll be minging around doing nothing, and that will just cause problems I heard someone say prisons work and remain quiet most of the time on the goodwill of the prisoners themselves. And a the whole prison, let's say you have 500 prisoners and then probably on a good day you'll probably have 30 to 40 prison officers. 40 prison officers wouldn't be able to hold them back to be honest. They have to weigh up the pros and cons of keeping prisoners happy inside. I would love to be able to say yeah, prisoners deserve everything they get and deserve much worse but now I've done the job I realise how important it is to keep a lot of people happy at once. <laughs> you know, even, if, even when you have one or two people unhappy, that's enough. If you have 500 people in one place unhappy, that's a recipe for disaster. There are ways of keeping them happy and content. Okay, that's my <laughs> memories of being a prison officer done and dusted. Um, I'm glad I've done that. It's been therapeutic a little bit for me, really. I don't look back at it with any fondness whatsoever. You know, I, I still have flashbacks to certain people I met inside that really frightened me still, I think. And I look back and think, yeah, there are a few people that I really would not like to meet again. Not because I'm in danger, but they were just nasty people, you know. There are there is nasty people in the world and I met some of them, you know. So when I think back, remembering that I spoke to types of guys who have killed people and done some horrendous things, yeah, I, I know that there's, there's just horrible people in the world. To be honest, that's about it. That's what I can say, really. So yeah, that's been my time as a prison officer. Day 29 done. After all that, don't forget <laughs> to uh, check out all my links in my description below. Um, I'm not the only one doing this 100 days vlog challenge. There's a whole group of us doing it, so I'll put all the links in my description. Uh, check them out, give a bit of support, because uh, yeah, I've done nearly 30 days and it's, it's hard work. Cheerio.